Hello everyone, server TV is here. Today we are going to talk about ship class Dreadnought, tier 1 and tier 2, sea margo and knife, their models and how they are working. The first Dreadnought class ship is sea margo. There are no variety in sea margo models, so you should build specific playstyle around them. Main weapon. Heavy plasma cannons, high accuracy and range, high single damage, but low rate of fire and low projectile speed. You can't shoot corvettes with this weapon, but big and slow targets are the best. Secondary weapon. Repeater guns. High rate of fire, good damage, fast projectile speed, but not high range. Repeaters are better than main weapon for doing damage. Try to use them immediately when the enemy is in their range. The first Dreadnought model, Plasma Broadside, when active for 2.5 seconds, fire plasma projectiles from the side of the Dreadnought into the designated enemy at 2400 meters, to down 25 seconds. Plasma doesn't hunt enemies, but making a predictive shot. Also, plasma projectiles doesn't shoot through terrain or allies. Active model without active targets spending model for free. The best targets for plasma broadside are artillery cruiser, destroyer, tactical cruiser, uncareful corvettes. Eat plasma! Damn it! The second Dreadnought model. V2 missiles. When active, launching 12 V2 missiles on your chosen enemy. Rockets are slow, but homing on the chosen enemy. V2 missile doesn't avoid terrain or allies, so keep that in mind. With the lack of speed, enemies can fly away, hide, use anti-missile lasers, or simply die before rockets even touch them. The best usage of V2 missiles controlling artillery cruisers, forcing them to hide, use shields or anti-missile lasers. While dueling, V2 missiles are not so effective. While they fly, you or your target can die. Enemy dreadnoughts can use anti-missile lasers. V2 missiles are good for dealing massive damage with plasma broadside, helping you to pick easy kills on the enemy. Don't use V2 missiles on enemy corvettes. Their basic fly speed are too slow. The third Dreadnought model, anti-missile lasers, that are good for defending you or your allies from rockets, like V2 missiles, Tempest missiles, bomb catapult or flechette missiles. Anti-missile lasers doesn't make you invulnerable to enemy missiles. They can't shoot a lot of missiles at the same time, so avoid missile swarm hitting you. While dueling, anti-missile lasers are really good, especially when you are not standing on the place and helping anti-missile lasers to shoot more missiles. The fourth Dreadnought model, Warp Jump. After activating Dreadnought channeling Warp Jump for 5 seconds and teleporting you ahead for 5 kilometers. Using Warp Jump correctly can help you take good position, escape critical situation or regroup with your team.
using warp jump guarantees you your survivability in desperate situation. But when you active it without even thinking of, you are going to be destroyed. There is one more thing. After activating warp jump you have 5 seconds to lock your orientation to instantly use plasma broadside after appearing to the enemy. Warping to enemy team is a one way ticket. So try to kill enemy tactical cruisers, artillery cruisers or other ship that are low on health. The model cooldown is 40 seconds, so basically you are not going back. The best way to use warp jump is to flank enemy or appear from behind. Enemies that don't expect you from that side can suffer a lot of damage from your plasma broadside and your secondary weapon. After doing so, try to use terrain to hide from the enemy, waiting for cooldown to regroup with team or forcing ahead. Warp Jump is really famous on some high tier dreadnoughts. So practice a bit and recruit fleet to understand it better. That was a Simargo gameplay and now we are moving to the next tier 2 dreadnought ship, Nash. Knife has same models as Sim Argo Dreadnought, but receive additional models for use. The first Dreadnought model, Nuclear Missile. After activation, launch a nuclear missile at designated target at range 10 km. Nuke is not homing, but can be detonated manually by activating first model again. Nuke launches into the sky, so terrain or allies can intercept it. I'm serious, launch with caution! The next Dreadnought model receives a new type of rockets, flatshot missiles. Those missiles are faster than Wu-2 missiles, but has shorter range, 2400 meters. Flatshot missiles' faster cooldown compensates their lower damage. This is a great model for engaging enemy in close or medium combat. The best targets for these rockets are low health targets or ship classes like artillery, tactical cruiser or destroyers. To make a good synergy with flechettes, use plasma broadside to decimate uncareful enemies. On third slot we have a heavy autoguns model. After activating, autoguns fire at chosen enemy or at any other closer ship that is in range. They have low fire rate and projectile speed, but are a good choice for doing additional damage to enemy ships. Also, they can fire at missiles. Sure. In the end, the first main model for Dreadnought, Armor Amplifier. After activating, Dreadnought absorbed 80% of incoming damage for 15 seconds. After that, model goes on 35 seconds cooldown. This model makes you a great tank to engage enemy team and lead the battle. This model doesn't make you immortal, artillery can do some damage. Use this model after burning your energy by using shields or when 
you are getting hard focused by enemy team. Also, you can use this model to go through enemy team to kill soft targets that are behind. The recommended loadout for Dreadnought is Plasma Broadside in 1st slot and Armor Amplifier in 1st slot, 2nd and 3rd slots on your disposal. If this guide was useful for you, leave a like, a comment below and subscribe to our channel. So see you in the next video. Bye!